Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Soul Winning Motivator Broadcast number 46. Uh, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International. As always, it is absolutely so wonderful to be with you again today to encourage you to witness for Christ in these last and evil days. The simple purpose of this broadcast slash podcast is to encourage you, exhort you, and motivate you to share your faith in Jesus Christ with those who are lost around you. Even though we will share some instructions on how to witness for the Lord from time to time, we believe that most Christians do not need to learn how to witness for the Lord if they have been saved for a while. Uh, they just need to go and do it. So our aim here is more motivational than instructional. Our soul winning passage from the Word of God today is Mark 10:45, which reads, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Allow me to share with you some important insights regarding this passage from David Guzik's commentary on the Bible. He said, Real ministry is done for the benefit of those ministered to, not for the benefit of the minister. Many people are in the ministry for what they can receive, either emotionally or materially from their people instead of for what they can give to them. To give his life a ransom for many is one of the great claims Jesus Christ made about himself and his ministry. He is the one who stands in the place of guilty sinners and offers himself as a substitute for them. The ransom metaphor sums up the purpose for which Jesus gave his life and defines the complete expression of his service. The prevailing notion behind the metaphor is that of deliverance by purchase. Whether a prisoner of war, a slave, or a forfeited life is the object to be delivered. Because the idea of equivalence or substitution was proper to the concept of a ransom. It became an integral element in the vocabulary of redemption in the Old Testament. It speaks of a liberation which connotes a servitude or an imprisonment from which, can, from which man cannot free himself. Our soul winning quote today is from Steve Jorgen. The basic idea, he goes on to say, behind servant evangelism projects is very simple. It is not difficult to begin loving people in practical ways. We need to avoid the human tendency to make things overly complicated. Our soul winning devotional is part 29 of our series titled What Evangelism Is from Dave Early and David Willer. They go on to say evangelism is washing feet. Next to the Holy Spirit, the Bible, and the gospel message, there is nothing more powerful or useful in the call of evangelism than the towel and the basin. In the time of Christ, the streets were unpaved, and men either wore sandals or went barefoot. Meals were eaten reclining around low tables. Obviously, it was entirely possible that the man eating next to you or across from you would have his dirty feet near your face making for an unappetizing meal. Therefore, a servant usually greeted guests at the door 
and washed their feet. On the night of the Last Supper, Jesus gathered with his disciples in a rented room to celebrate the Passover. There was no host and no servant to wash feet. Jesus, realizing the situation, used it as a chance to show love in action. How did he do it? He did it with a basin and a towel. John 13, 1-5 reads, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Ladies and gentlemen, they go on to say his actions were motivated by love. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Servant evangelism is not a program. It is service motivated by love. Notice that this picture of humble service involved action. Servant evangelism is more than good intentions and warm feelings. It is love in action. Jesus did not do his act of service merely to show his love for his disciples. He had another objective. He wanted to leave us a vivid portrait of the way he desires us to live. We should also be willing to wash feet. Amen to that. John thirteen twelve through 15 reads, So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, Ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Ladies and gentlemen, they go on to say our natural inclination is to be served, not to serve others. Even Jesus' disciples wrestled with an entitlement mentality. Uh, and I would like to add, like so many ministers today, James and John's desire to sit in authority prompted Jesus' clear call for us to be servants as well. Every Christ follower should heed Jesus' instruction to become a servant and slave of all. Just as Jesus washed the disciples' feet, Christians are to do the same for a hurting world that is dying to see authentic examples of a loving Savior. In the end, Christians must understand that unbelievers will not accept what we say about Christ until they first see the truth manifested in our lives. We are implored by the biblical example to wrap our faith in the flesh of daily living. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we need to pray. We need your help uh, to be like you. Holy Father God, we thank you for our dear uh, brothers who wrote this book, uh, led by you, to remind us, Lord, 
to be servant evangelists. People who are not in it for themselves, but like you, in it for the people. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins, of doing ministry with selfish motives. And, Lord, grant us your grace, all of us, in the power of your Holy Spirit, to pick up the basin and the towel and serve those who oppose themselves, those who are lost in this world and have not found their way back to you through Jesus Christ. For it is in his wonderful name we pray. Amen. And now, dear friend, if you're listening today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the first prayer you need to pray is what we call the sinner's prayer. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live eternally with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, keep the soul winners fire. God bless you.